Hey, what's up, Fizzad family? It is crazy to think that we are so close to starting a new school year. Today, I wanted to share what I would consider to be one of my top five teaching tips is creating a grid system for your classroom. Now, some of you already might be doing this or you've heard of it before. I want to show you how I use it. Um, mostly in the past, probably the last four or five years, I've used this just for assigning seats. But this year, I'm going to use it not only for assigning seats, but also a way to social distance my students for when they come to PE. Really quick before we get started here, if you're interested in more games, activities, and teaching tips, then please feel free to check out my website, which is called pewithmrg.com. Everything I have on there is free, and everything I create, I try to put it in a Google Sheet or a Google Doc. That way you can make your own copy, make any changes that you want. If you want to join my Facebook group, we now have over 3,000 members. It's called the PE Lounge. And if you want to follow me throughout the year, um, daily updates, you can follow me on Twitter, which is PE by Mr. G. So the first thing you need to do is choose a corner of your gym because you're going to need to build this on two walls. Now, the corner I choose is where students come in and I build it so it's right in front of my whiteboard. That way I can give directions and students can see our learning objectives for the day. So there's two things that you're going to need to create columns and rows now in order to do this you're going to choose two different categories and it can be anything it can be colors numbers foods animals it really doesn't matter as long as they are different so for example what i always like to do is i like to choose colors as my columns i will go and pick out five or six different colors and then i tape them up on the wall now because of social distancing this year normally i wouldn't do this but i'm going to space them out so each column is six feet apart one thing that is really important is making sure that your columns are different. You do not want them all to be the same. For example, you don't want them all to be blue. I did this uh, the first week or two that I tried this for the first time, and it was a huge disaster. But once I changed it up to different colors, it made it way easier for kids to remember what their color column was. Now, to make rows, I always use numbers. Again, you can use whatever category you would like but I've found numbers work best and they're easy to remember. So what I end up doing is typing them up, printing them out, laminating them, and then taping them onto the second wall. So for example, we have row one, row two, row three, row four. And again, because of social distancing, you can space these out as far as you'd like. Once you have your rows and columns created and taped up on the wall, you can now begin to assign students a spot. And in order to do this, all you have to do is combine one row and one column together. So for example, we have red one, blue one, green one, gold one, pink one, and then so on. Now, also in this example, you can see we just easily created 20 spots for your students and it requires no floor tape. This will last the entire school year and you'll never have to replace it. So for students, there's only two things that they have to remember and that is their color and their number. And we practice this a lot at the beginning of the year. What I always tell my students is line one hand up with their color, line the other hand up with their number, draw an imaginary line, and where they come together, that would be their assigned spot. So this is what it looks like as students are coming into your gym. Let's say the first student comes in and their spot's gold too. They line up with gold, line up with two, come in, take a seat right away. The next student, if their spot is green three, same thing, line up with green, line up with three, and they're also sitting down ready to go now. And then lastly, let's say last student, their spot's red two, find red, find two, and now they're in their spot. If you have this system in place, you're going to have an entire class sitting down, ready to go in front of your whiteboard in about 20 seconds, which then allows more time for instructions, games, and activities. Again, I've been using this system for the last four or five years. Um, I would highly recommend it if you're not using it to think about implementing it before the school year starts, especially this year as it allows you to socially distance your students, but it also allows you to provide activities and lets them remain active. I also love that it will last the entire year. If you laminate your columns and rows, it'll actually probably last longer than that. But I don't know about you. I hated having to replace floor tape every week. Um, it gets expensive and you can spend that time doing something more meaningful. Um, it's also perfect for giving directions. I guarantee if you put this system in your classroom, you will improve your classroom management in a number of different ways. Um, it's also after all the COVID and pandemic stuff, it's a really easy way to create and assign teams. Instead of having to count students out, you can do it by row one and row two as a team, row three, row four as a team. You can also do it by columns. It's the same thing for lining up. I know some teachers struggle with getting their kids to line up. 
This is a really easy way for you to have all your students line up in an orderly fashion. It's not crazy. It's not chaos. You can do it by whatever row is sitting down, ready to go. So example, row one, row two, so on. And same thing, you can also change it up by doing it by columns as well. I hope this teaching tip is helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me. And thank you again so much for watching.